how to go about doing it and how individual changes proliferate. Right, I'm going to take you through a little bit of a model here to try and illustrate the point. Getting more people to visit, it's a classic problem. Of all the things to start with, it's probably one of the most important things to any small business, certainly from my life as a business advisor. Um, getting more inquiries is the number one issue, apart from price, that always comes up. And if you're a shop, yeah, every day footfall's passing your door. Many of those people will notice what we we'll call your street presence. Your street presence is the sum of your parts. Your parts being your shop sign, your shop window, maybe you've got A boards, maybe you've even got shutters with signage on them when it comes up at night. That could be described as your ship's street presence. You may have other things like this, flags and got as well. Okay. Many people notice you. Some are interested in what it says, the message that it speaks to. Yeah. And a few will be inclined to walk through your door. The issue is, you know, once, you're, once they're in, you're confident you can sell to them. The problem is getting them in. So if we think about that in a bit more of a sort of analytical way, let's say for sake of argument, you know, you get a thousand people walking past your shop in a day or a week, it doesn't matter. There's a thousand people walking over a period of time. Your shop presence means that 50% of them actually, oh, I've noticed there's a computer shop there. So of that five, of that, sorry, that thousand, five hundred actually have taken notice. For some reason, 20% of them become interested. Maybe your shop sign. You can't say a lot of a shop sign, but some people have words like computer repairs, for example. Maybe that word, computer repairs, makes them think, oh, that's interesting to know. I didn't know they did that. I remember that. But maybe there's more that goes on, because maybe your able talks about a particular offer. It converts that last 20% to come through the door. Yeah? So just thinking about attention, interest, and inquiry to really important stages of bringing people in. You can see how that 1,000 people drops off to just 20. And then, of course, you've actually got to convert them, which you're pretty confident with, but it still won't be 100%, and that's a different issue. They're into sales skills there. Now, marginal, thinking about that breakdown of marginal gains. So, passers by inquiries. What are the factors that influence that? I've already mentioned shop sign, what it says. You may have an A board. Your shop window, what's in it? How it's laid out. You may have a signage on your shutter. When you close up at night, some people have designs on their shutters. They may not. Opening hours. Yeah? And there may be other things that you do as well. You may have flags. Yeah? You may have all sorts of other gizmos and widgets that help create this presence on the road. Now, different things work differently. Now, part of modelling this was just to simply look at how effective different things are. And this is purely arbitrary, and I'm just explaining it to you so you understand the model that we built. So if we take all of those things, shop signage, ables, window, and shutter, we just took 100% and said, which of those is most effective at grabbing people's attention? Yeah? Well, shop signage can't really say much. It probably says the name of the business and maybe a phone number. And it might say computer repairs. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it just says ABC computers. So shop signage typically isn't going to be the major thing that grabs attention. But Ableboards, Ableboards are entirely different. You know, you're walking along and Ableboard is right in front of you. Yeah. And Ableboard really grabs, especially if what's on it is written. So we put it up to 30%. If your shop is sighted right on a busy street, literally where people are walking by, past you all the time, then that shop window is going to have a big impact as well because in there you're able to display things nicely to attract people's attention. So we just decided, okay, we'll give that 40% out of that 100. Shutter signage, much less so. Why? Well, it's only there at night. There's far less people passing. So in terms of the proportion of attention that it's grabbing, it's going to be somewhat low. And then we applied those principles, that same sort of set of principles to how good these things are, it's very interesting inquiry. The numbers don't absolutely matter. I'm just trying to illustrate what we did. So, thinking about an able. So, what impacts the performance of an able? Content. Content. Size. Size. Position. Position, yeah. Design. Design. Yeah. Position and location. I've broken this out a bit in terms of message appeal. Yeah. Is it something that's interesting? 
the design appeal, so I mentioned design, definitely. The relevance of the message, as I might have on my able to break off for gaming computers when everybody walking past is, I don't know, going to and from work and isn't interested in gaming, so it might not be relevant to you. Uh, the message readability, can I actually see it? Is the font size so small I have to go right up to it and peer at it before I can make sense of it? Or does it really jump out at me? The clarity of the message. Is it written clearly, in the English used, clear? Do I understand what is being communicated to me easily, just in a glance? The currency of that message. Maybe that it's a, you might have something on your able that says there's an offer on that ends in August or September. And other things, but maybe for products that have been superseded and so How often you refresh it? Yeah. If you do not change your shop windows, if you do not change what's on your shop on your A board, it disappears. Because it always looks the same. There's nothing new, there's nothing fresh, there's nothing to attract attention. So there's this issue about frequency. Proposal two. Um, and the number of them. Yeah, rather than have one A board, why not have one at that end of my shop and one at this end of my shop. They might say exactly the same thing. But you're doubling the chances of increasing and grabbing the attention. And there'll be more. There are other things that people have said. I'm not trying to create an exhaustive list here, but just using the model. I'm sure you can think of lots of other things. So those other things that I mentioned, like shop signage, you know, there's, that's a, a, a breakdown of what affects the performance of shop signage. That's a breakdown of things that would affect the performance of a shop window. That's a breakdown of what would affect the performance of shutter signage, which is quite unusual in the first place, but there we go. But what we're doing is we're thinking constantly in hierarchies. Every time you come up with a factor, immediately it's, okay, what affects that factor? Down and down and down. 22 factors in all, and interestingly, four of these overlap. So if we start looking at things like uh, attractiveness of design, it immediately starts to have the multiple effect. Yeah? Start looking at clar message clarity. Again, I think that's another one that appears in the three. Good basic principles. Marginal gains that can be made and applied across multiple areas to have a bigger impact. So. Improve everything by just 3%. It's pretty small. On all those things. And we did a bit of modeling, and that had an impact on, remember the figures before, this is how much those things have increased. We've improved all those little things by 3%, and this is the net effect we're getting. And overall, by improving things marginally, what we're finding is our ability to Attract attention has gone up nearly a quarter just by doing lots of little marginal things. Yeah? Same for interest, same for inquiry. That's just how the numbers fell out. There was no planning in that at all. So already we're seeing, oh, hang on, this is having a bit of a disproportionate impact. Now, if you apply that to where we were before, so as our as is, 1,000 people, 50% of them notice us, 20% of them are interested, and 20% of them come through the door. Well, hang on, we've applied a marginal gain to all these different factors, which means that the new percentages are now up here. We've increased them quite dramatically. If we apply those to those original numbers, look at what we get. Look at what we get. So just by applying 3% to something like 35 different factors, yeah, 35% right. What you're finding, which is really interesting here, this is this, uh, this business about gains proliferating. You know, down here, that's your 87% of three, but it's not a linear relationship. You can, if your marginal gain can be bigger, then it has an even bigger disproportionate effect. So, you know, for the sake of argument, if all your marginal gains were 10%, you'd be hitting the 450% rise. Right. It's huge. It's huge. And what I'm trying to do here is illustrate this point that marginal gains are greater than the sum of the parts. The natural fact, it's not futile to think of things as little tiny things that you can improve only a little. You know, the tendency is always to try and look for the big silver bullet that's going to solve all our problems. You know, this is all about, hang on, there's another way to look at things. 
another way to look at things. British cycling have used it to great effect. What about longer opening hours? We spoke about that, didn't we? Or opening at different times. This is this more or different approach. And we're not actually doing anything to improve anything at all, we're just staying open longer. I'm not suggesting everyone does this part. I don't think that you all don't open long enough already. I'm just pointing it out. So this is where we are. This is our current marginal gain. Let's say we open that bit longer and get, we get 10% more footfall. Yeah? Instead of opening for the day, instead of closing at 5, I stay open until half past 6 and catch some of the trains coming back from wherever the nearest big town is to you. And I get 10% extra people. What does that do to my numbers? Suddenly, up they go. So a 10% increase has led to an 18%. It backwards through. <coughs> All we're trying to illustrate here is that marginal gains are greater than the sum of the problem. 